And just a squad update first of, of all, if you could, please. Yeah, um, obviously on the weekend, uh, Carl uh, Starfelt, um, yeah, I hurt his knee and I uh, haven't had an exact diagnosis, but it, it's nothing too serious, but probably keep him out for a couple of weeks. And um, and Kyogo, obviously his shoulder, uh, trained this morning, um, looked okay. So, you know, he's available. I've made a decision whether he'll play or not, but um, in terms of him training and doing everything at training, he was fine. Now, just on the eve of this big match, just give us your, your thoughts on coming up against the holders and everything, that, the emotions that that bring with it. Yeah, looking forward to it, excited by it. I mean, it's a, it's a reward for, you know, a fantastic season last year um, you know, that everyone at this football club put in. And, and you know, the reward is you, you, you get to play in this tournament and, and test yourself against the best. And um, so, yeah, it's exciting. It's where we want to be and it's where we want to compete. Speaking to Jota after the, the game at this... Saturday, he was saying that you know this could be a game that the players would record, and maybe show their kids in like fifteen years' time. Is that the sort of emotion that you want to convey to those players to really embrace the moment and enjoy it? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, like I said, it's 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 where you want to be. You know, any footballer, um, any sports person, you know, you want to test yourself at the highest possible level. And in terms of club football, this is the highest possible level. And um, so I'm sure for the boys, all of them, it'll be uh, you know an experience that that they're looking forward to and, and an experience they want to make memorable. But, you know, you still got to compete in it. It's not uh, it's not a, a, a game where you, you kind of um, dismiss the fact that you've got to be competitive in it to make it a, a really good memory. And you've obviously managed all across the world, managed the World Cup against some of the best teams. So what does it mean to you personally to manage against the best teams now, you know, in Celtic colours? Yeah, I guess. Look again. I guess uh, similar to the players, uh, as you said. You know, I've been I've been pretty fortunate. I've I've coached at you know World Cups, Confeds Cups, um, you know, um, Asian Champions League, Europa last year. So you know, you, you, these are the things that you want to experience as you know as as a football manager. And and I've been really fortunate that I've had some some great experiences. And um, this will be another one. And like you said, you want to test yourself against the best but I think what's more important is that you know this football club gets an opportunity to play in a tournament where um, we want to be you know we want to be a, a consistent performer in and um, yeah that's what uh, yeah this whole sort of um, objective is for us, for us sorry <coughs> how confident are you how confident are the team that you can win tomorrow night given the brilliant form you've been in so far this season it's not about being confident to win all, all we can do is control control our performance you know, every game we play we just try and play the game a certain way and and be the best we can be and, and that's what we've done in every game so far that's what we did last year and that's what we'll try and do tomorrow night we'll just try and play our football be the best team we can be and and you know the 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 end result is often a, you know um a, a consequence of of you know good performance strong performance so there's no point us thinking about winning or losing or any other result without thinking about well first thing we want to do is make sure we perform because we know we're playing against you know a top football team um with some fantastic players with a brilliant manager and what we want to do is go out there and be the you know offer the best of ourselves to to to, to measure up against that and you talk about obviously testing yourself against the best. Is it also exciting for you and the players to be almost bringing your brand of football to the kind of the Champions League? Is that something that, well, that gives it an extra kind of intrigue? Yeah, I mean, but that's what I mean when I say test ourselves. Like, there's, there's no point playing football a certain way, and then when you you get you know the opportunity to to measure it against the very best, you shy away from it, and and you kind of go, well, you know what? Let's just try and limit sort of any sort of damage tomorrow night, then that's not really a test because you don't know. Because you could go out there tomorrow night and, yeah, you could limit the damage and you might get a win playing a different way. But have you really tested yourself? I don't think you have. So when I say test ourselves, that's what I mean. I mean, we go out there tomorrow night, being the football team, we have been to this point. And, you know, you measure, then you've got a real measure of where you're at. And if we're, if we're short of where we need to be, then we, we go back, dust ourselves off and work at it again, get a little bit closer next time. But... Um, I've always taken these games anytime I've been involved as an opportunity to to really, you know, uh, as I said, um, stamp your own sort of identity on on, on a game and, and and see where it takes you. Can that help the players then? And what you you're not going to change your approach. Some teams would do, yeah. will do. They look at single mindedness. They know exactly how to play. 
Does that help going into a game for them as well? Uh, uh, look, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I think it's why we've been so consistent because the players kind of have a clear understanding of what we need to do every week, you know, irrespective of the opponent. So if I, you know, <coughs> and there are certainly different approaches you can take. I've said that a million times. It's not just about, you know, there's one, there's, there's a million ways you can be successful in the game of football. And if we changed our tactics every week and, and we were that kind of team and we were successful, then the players would be expecting that tomorrow night. But they understand what, you know, their roles are within our team, how we're going to play. We do that every week and we do that for a reason and that's because we want to win games of football and, and be successful. And, um, you know, if I walked in there tomorrow and, and said, look, we're, we're going to change our approach, I think it's not just tomorrow night that we, we kind of miss an opportunity, but further down the track, I think there'll be doubts in their minds about, well, why are we actually doing this? I keep saying that the reason to play this football is to win. That's it. There's no other reason for it. I love that it's exciting. I love that our supporters love it. Um, I, you know, I, w I think that's important, but if it wasn't successful, I wouldn't do it. Does sticking with that style, though, bring a risk the more you go up the food chain? Well, if there's a system that doesn't give you risk, I'd love to hear it, you know. If there's something that you can guarantee me tomorrow night that if I play this way, you're guaranteed to minimise risk, then... It doesn't exist. Any 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 system you play, any approach you take, there's inherent risk. Um, but there's also sometimes the greater the risk, the greater the opportunity because, um, you know, we're trying to do things a little bit differently. We don't want to be like every other team. And, uh, you know, with that, um, there's always that possibility that you'll stumble. That's fine. Um, stumbled in the past. The uh, important thing is you just dust yourself off and, and keep going. In adapting your style to playing in Europe, what have you learned from the games last year? Because there were one or two sore ones along the way, but what did you see in terms of progress to convince you you can make this way work on this level? Well, I mean, I, I, again, I, I guess it depends how you view. I mean, I, I know people sort of reflect on our European performance last year, you know, as some sort of abject failure, but we won three group games, you know in a very hard group. Um, sure, we got spanked once here by Bayer Leverkusen because they were a great side, but we still gave a good account of ourselves and the two we lost away were decent games. So I guess, you know, people kind of go to the end point because we lost to Bodo Glimp, but, you know, our priorities were pretty clear what we were going to try and achieve at that point of the season. That was the league. So um, it's not that I was dismissive of it. So I, I, there was nothing that we did last year that surprised me. We, we weren't ready for it, absolutely. You know, the teams we were up against were very strong teams. But again, we went out there and measured ourselves. And that first night we lost 4-0 um, was a good test for us. We saw that we came up short. And the next time we're out there, we got a little bit closer and then we got a little bit closer again. And like I said, we end up winning three games. If we win three group games in the Champions League, I don't think people will be saying it's been a poor performance yet. So um, I think we learned a lot out of last year and I think it helped us in the league because I think the players got real belief that even against the very best, while you know, we didn't win the game, all the games we did, we, we challenged every strong team we played against. And, and that gives players confidence that if we get it right, then we can, we can trouble anyone. Just finally, on a similar vein, are you excited, intrigued at how your players then do on this stage? Are you looking forward to just seeing, look, what you've created, how it how it furs on this stage? Now? I, I don't know if excited or, or intrigued. I just, you know, I, I just want the players to go out there and, and and be the best version of themselves as they have been. I mean, they they've got an opportunity, like I said, to to play in in, in an unbelievable um, tournament um, against quality opposition and you know want to go out there and just enjoy yourself and be yourself you know and, and that's what we tried to do we've set up you know the way we play our football they enjoy but they enjoy because they it's successful they, we're getting returns on it but also they love the fact that you know they can go out there and, and express themselves and that's what i said I, I don't want that 90 minutes tomorrow to just whiz by and they haven't really had it, you know, gone out there and, and been the best we can, they can be. So my job is to get them ready for that. And then after that, it's up to them to take that opportunity. Okay. Yeah. And where does this rank in the biggest games that you've managed in your career thus far? Is it the biggest? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, they're all big, you know, and, and I know it's not me being dismissive of it, but 
as I said, I, I've built a career on on winning things. I love winning things. I love winning games of football. I love winning trophies. I love being part of you know groups that do that. And every sort of challenge I've had along the way, um, I've seen it as an opportunity to do that. So, um, you know, it's not like um, I guess from my point. As a, as a point of reference, it's not like I look back on my career and I see, you know, all these games that I've been fortunate to be involved with as some sort of um, achievement. The achievement comes after, you know. You, you want to, I said, from my perspective, it's about making an impact. It's about being successful. It's about winning things, winning games of football. And, and that's where you get, you know, the significance of it more. But um, I, I'm <coughs> I'm lucky in, that, in the respect that, you know, I represent a football club that's given me this platform to... To participate in in you know the best club you know, competition in the world, so from that perspective, I'm just like the players. I want to make the most of it. And realistically, for this group, what is the the target then to get out of this this group? The target is to be the best we can be, and let's see where that takes us. You know, if we if we if we're the best we can be, um, I'm happy to accept what comes before us. Chris, there's an obvious feel good factor around the place given the the domestic results. That seems to be lending itself to a growing expectation going into tomorrow night. Is that an expectation that sits okay with you or does that need to be tempered a little bit? Where do you think the expectation should be going into tomorrow night? So you want me to burst people's bubbles there? <laughs> you, want me to be, you want me to bring it down into this whole experience? No, I, I'm glad our, our supporters are, are buzzing about it. I've got no problem with that. I think that's... That's what we love about the game, you know. Yeah, of course, you know, my job is to stay even-tempered through it, right? So in terms of my expectations and, and you know, what I'm sort of um, communicating to the players for us as a group is, is what we need to do to pr keep progressing, that's a different story. But, you know, I want our supporters dreaming of, of big games and big wins and, and, and winning things. I mean, that's, that's the role of us as a football club, you know. It, I'm sure they get enough of their bubble burst in, in their normal lives on a daily basis. It doesn't need me to bring them down and tell them, look, you know, don't don't come here too excited tomorrow because it might not go well. You know, I don't I don't think that's my role. My role is to to make sure they come bouncing in and and hopefully we send them bouncing out. I think Ronnie touched on it a little bit earlier on, but in terms of being able to enjoy it, I know you're obviously focused. The players are so focused as well, but can you? Um, really enjoy this occasion, or is that one again for the fans? No, you know I think you, you do enjoy it if 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 you take in the whole experience because there, you know, there's no doubt there'll you know there'll be moments tomorrow night where we've got an opportunity to do something, and and the players I think will 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 thrive in that space, and and it depends what you mean by sorry, it depends what you mean by enjoyment. You know, it's it's if you're expecting it to be an easy night where you're, you're running around with a smile on your face, no, it's going to be hard. It's, you're going to have to work your backside off and, and, and be challenged in every single way. But there's an enjoyment in that. You know, that's why elite sportsmen do what they do. They love the struggle. You know, they love the challenge of that's where the enjoyment comes. And then you hopefully make a good memory with, you know, at the end of it saying, well, you know, we had a red hot go today and, and we got something out of it. So I think there still is enjoyment. I think if they don't enjoy it, then, then I think they're missing an opportunity. But... It's not going to be easy. That's that's very plain and clear, and, and we all understand that. It just finally, for me, I think your opposite number tomorrow night identified Celtic as, as potentially their toughest opponents in this group. That must be quite nice to hear. Well, hopefully saying it after the game, mate, that's more important, you know, again, before the game. Um, but, you know, I, I got a great sort of admiration and respect for him because, you know, he's... He's been put in charge of some of the biggest football clubs in the world, you know, who, um, and he's been successful wherever he's been. And, you know, knowing that just how challenging this job is, the fact that he's been given that responsibility, um, you know, at some of the biggest clubs in the world and, and it's brought success, uh, to me, that's, uh, you know, like I said, I've got a great admiration and respect for, for everything that Carlo's done. Chris. Hi, Ange. Hey. Um, been a whirlwind 10 days um, for the club since the draw has been made. Um, at what point did you afford yourself some time to think about the magnitude of the task of this first game um, and putting your wits against one of the, what, the best team in the world? Yeah, it was probably, I was almost kick off on Saturday, 12.30, game finished 2.30, about 3pm I reckon I started uh, 
um, thinking about it because, as you said, since the draw, you know, I was really conscious of the fact we had three games before that. Um, you know, we had Dundee United away, we had Ross County in the Cup and obviously the Derby on Saturday. And I thought the worst thing for us is to be looking ahead to this game and, and not go into it in good form or, or sort of have taken our eye off the ball and, and maybe slipped up in a result or two because then you're going into it with a whole different mindset. So, you know, I, I made sure the players, it's... <coughs> <clears throat> it's not that you know we we kind of banish the word Champions League from 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 the place, but you know we, we we really had a focus on what's the next challenge, what's the next game, um, and you know I think you see with our performances in the three games um, since the draw and and the results obviously have been great, but our performances have got stronger and stronger because I think you know everyone's understood that you know the next step is the next important one and. And obviously after Derby on, 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 on Saturday, then we could turn our focus, you know, straight onto this game and 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 you know, you kinda you sense it. I mean, you know, the boys come out of the training and, and the Champions League balls are there, so they know it's a different competition and, and a different feeling. And um, you know, from then on then that's when you really think about it. And you've spoken often of the late nights where yourself and your father sat and watched these big, big European games from halfway across the world. You're now a little over twenty four hours away from playing the biggest team in the world on potentially the biggest stage. I know the focus tomorrow night will be all about the players and what they do, but will you take a moment pre-match to reflect? And also, what would your dad think of all of this? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I do, I, I try to, um, you know, just, you know, whether it's, you know, just 30 seconds of, of just making sure that I, you know, appreciate where I am. And, and you do, you think about the people that, that got you to that space. And like I said, obviously my father isn't around anymore, but, you know, he was a big sort of, um, pillar in my life in terms of you know putting me in this place where I am right now but I've got you know family now loved ones who and friends who you know some of them will be in Australia literally getting up in the middle of the night to watch it and, and you do you, you, you kind of reflect on it because uh, it's been a hell of a journey you know, I've, you know, I've come from the other side of the world and you know I'm, I'm sitting here right now so you do reflect on that and you kind of hope that um, you know they take pride in it I'm sure they do and 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 you know, feel part of it, you know, because um, again, like any other person, I guess, I'm I'm the end product of a lot of influences and, and a hell of a lot of love and support and, and you kind of want those people to share in, in whatever happens, you know. Um, you want to shield them from the bad stuff, but the good stuff, you, you, you want to share it with them. And in recent weeks, the team have been so clinical in the final third. How encouraging is that ahead of a game like tomorrow where chances might be fewer and further between? Yeah, it's important. It's fair to say that you know we're not going to get probably as many chances as we had recently, um, and we do. We have to be clinical, and I think we've shown that side of the game again. I think you know a lot of the commentary around us is is the way we play our football, but that doesn't mean we we kind of just you know do things one way. I mean, we've dominated possession in every game this year, but we didn't dominate possession on Saturday. But didn't make us any less dominant in terms of the performance and and the goals we scored. So, you know. Within that context, that's you know, and that's the area we, we were working really hard on that, that final third because I think the higher levels you go up, as you say, <coughs> the, the chances become fewer and, and, and more challenging. And it's the same at the other end. You've, you've got to try and limit the, the opposition chances. So that's been a real focus for us um, this year of you know what happens in both boxes and how we how we can become more efficient because um, that's in the rarefied era of, of playing against the best. That's where games get decided and. Uh, you know, I think um, tomorrow night that'll be really important, uh, both you know, from an attacking perspective and a defensive perspective. Uh, I know you're a very humble guy, Ange, but just on a personal level, I think this will make you the first Australian manager in, in group stage, um, Champions League group stage history. How does that make you feel that you keep um, setting these accomplishments and stuff? Like, how does it give you a great sense of pride? Yeah, it does, like I said. I mean, because that's part of the story as well, I guess, because I grew up in Australia and, and you kind of, and I know, you know, you know, the most of Australians who love football will be will be up watching the game, and and I'm hoping they feel part of it. They're part of the journey as well. So, so you do take pride in it, and um, but you know, again, I, I'm 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 really conscious that you know these kind of things become more sort of important. Hopefully, when I'm you know like lying on a lounge here on a Greek beach somewhere in, in 20 years' time. Right now, my biggest responsibility is to this football club. That's who I represent um, beyond anyone else. I, I represent this football club, its supporters, and 
I just want to make sure that when we go out there tomorrow night and every time we go out there, we, we do them proud and, and we, we put on a performance that, like I said, um, gives them some joy and some great memories. That's that's where my greatest responsibility lies and, and that's where my focus is. And one man you'll know very well since arriving at Celtic is John Clark, who's described the atmosphere out there as having an aura about it and a magic. Um, how big a part did the Celtic support have to play tomorrow night? We saw the collective yeah. Saturday with the ball boys and whatnot. How big a part did we have to play? Yeah, massively. Um, you know, uh, yeah, as you said, you know, we got we got John you know, training ground every day, and he he's um, you know, he tells us about you know the special feeling and and you know obviously Callum and, and James are probably two players who have felt that here, and but they're the only two. So for the rest, it'll be a little bit of a new experience. But yeah, you know, anyone you talk to, and and you just have to listen to how how opposition teams and, and and players and managers talk about their experiences after playing a Champions League game here. So. You know, uh, we've got Champions League support. We've just got to become a Champions League team. That's our responsibility as players and uh, hopefully we can begin that process tomorrow night.